What are our three logarithm laws that we had? We had a multiplication rule. The logarithm of A times B. Two numbers multiplied. What's that equal to? Yeah, multiplying the numbers is the same as adding the logarithms. It's exactly the corresponding to the power rule that you learned in grade 9, right? Multiplying powers is like adding exponents. Multiplying numbers is like adding logarithms. So that's number one. The other one is pretty much corresponding here. A divided by B, that's the same as log A minus log of B. And then... What's the third one here? The third one is a power rule, right? And then we'll put A to the power of B. What's that the same as? A to the power of B, you have a whole bunch of A's written there, right? It's it's B times this. This, is, again, is the way people remember it. They put that over there and multiply it. Okay, it's B times log of A. Log A, B log A. Hey, those are the three that you have. You could write a whole bunch of different ones as we go through this rest of this unit for little specific cases of things. Just like for exponent rules, you learn a few basic ones, but you could write a whole bunch of little specific ones if you wanted to. Those are the those are the main three for right now. That's what uh, you need in order to kind of simplify some of these things down below here if you've tried or haven't tried. This first one here I simplified for you last time. We'll uh, we'll look at this one here and then see how we're doing. Up to that point, you don't need the power rule. The other ones are all putting together numbers that with that are added or subtracted. Um, this one, if you have two log a plus five log b, the simplest way to do it is to put the power up on a top. Right. This is the same as log of a squared plus log of b to the fifth, or in other words, log of a squared b to the fifth, right? If you wanted to do it the long way, I mean, the long way would be to say 2 log a is like log a plus log a, right? 2x is like x plus x, right? 2x is like x, 1x plus 1x. You could write it out that way. You could say 2 log a is like log a plus log a. And then you could say plus log b. This is this is sort of the long way, just like you would have learned the exponent rules the long way. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this, but just for understanding point of view, you might want to think about it like that, right? There's five of them there. So that's where the, the five of these come from, five all multiplied. And this is where the two of those come from. Maybe okay, the power rule lets you do it a little more quickly. Some of the other ones here, um, I'm going to assume the ones up above here you can do, right? This this is going to be the same as log base 4 of 48 times 2 thirds times 8. If you work all that out, you get a power of 2. We have a power of 4. You can figure out what base, you know, what it is. What does this work out to here? Uh, is this, uh, what number is this then? Six. 256, you get log base 4 of 256. Without a calculator, like you should know your power is a 2, maybe, 256. 2 to the 8th, or 4 to the 4th. So it's 4. This one's actually easier because the number's a lot smaller when you work it out. I think that ends up being 2 or something like that. Um, this was just to have you notice something about uh, about roots like that, okay? If you do log of the cube root of 500 and uh, a third, you know, one third of the log of 500, what do you notice? The number you get, the decimal number you get, what's true about them? 
they're the same, right? We can, I mean, we can show that they're the same, right? Because log of cube root of 500, what's another way to write cube root of 500? 500 to the power of one third, right? And then, of course, that you can put the you can put the one third in front. Oops, what I write one half? One third log 500. If you wanted to write that as a rule, you could. You could say you could say log of nth root of x or something like that is equal to what's it going to be equal to? One over n log x. I wouldn't suggest memorizing a whole bunch of different rules here and stuff, but but you could write one like that if you wanted to write it in general. This expresses a single logarithm. There's no specific numbers in there, but you can still write it as a specific or as a single logarithm. I would suggest not trying to do it all in one step. I would write this as log of m cubed minus log of a half. You could write this as n to the one half, or what's the other way you could write it? Power of a half is like square root, right? Square root of n, you could write that, and then log of p. If you're writing what that's equal to, adding, subtracting the logarithms like multiplying and dividing, right? So this is the same as if you write this as a single logarithm, m cubed divided by square root of n, where does a p go? Top or bottom? This is plus, right? So it goes on top. If this was brackets around here, then what would happen? It would be on the bottom, right? Or you could get rid of the brackets and that would be negative. The common mistake here, the common wrong thing people write is they write log of m cubed times log of p divided by log of square root of n. So they've kind of remembered the, the rule somehow that meaning multiplying and dividing, but it's not that you multiply all the individual logarithms. It's that you multiply and divide all the individual numbers, then you take the logarithm. This, There's no way that can be the same as that, right? So it's definitely not this. This is a very common wrong answer though, okay? This last one here is just, again, a more difficult one for you to think about. I'm not sure if you've tried that one yet. I would like you to take 10 minutes, if you haven't already, and try some of the practice for uh, tutorial three before we start looking at the fourth thing. I think this would help to make sure we're okay with that. The practice is at the very end, remember, of the whole booklet. You could try this question if you haven't already. Okay. I'll stop this.